Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. So the question is, do surge protectors actually work? You know, pretty much everybody's got one of these. If you have a computer, even, you know, decades ago, you'd get a computer and people would say, oh, make sure you have it plugged into a surge suppressor because you don't want a surge to, like, damage your expensive stuff, right? And so most people use these things, and some people even think they protect against, like, direct lightning strikes and EMPs and all that kind of stuff. So the question is, well, what exactly is involved in, in, you know, building one of these things? How do they actually work, and what do they really protect against? So the short answer to the question, do surge protectors actually work, is sort of. So how do surge protectors actually work? Well, the key component in most surge protectors is known as a varistor, which stands for varying resistor. They look a little bit something like this, and uh, the way these things work is in, we're obviously dealing with alternating current here, so current is switching direction, you know, X number of times a second. So uh, a, a varying resistor or varistor is, essentially it's a component where at a low voltage they don't conduct. But when a certain threshold voltage is reached, they sort of turn on and they start dumping current, so they become conductive. So how do, you, how do you actually use that? Well, you generally have a circuit something like this. There are three of them kind of in a triangle shape. You have your live, your neutral, and your ground. And you simply, you simply connect a varistor between those three terminals. Now, most surges that come down the line are going to be across live and neutral. So, of course, you'd have you know, your live and neutral coming in. You have a varistor connected across those. And... Um, Usually you have a kind of like a turn-on voltage, so this is kind of a graph of your, your average varistor. Um, we're, we'll ignore the red line, just kind of look at the blue line. The idea here is that the x-axis is the voltage and the y-axis is the current. So uh, as the, looking at our blue line, as the voltage increases, you know, you're at 100, 200, whatever. In this case, uh, the varistor it turns on at about 300 and some volts. So as the voltage rises, beginning at 300 volts, that blue line sort of skyrockets, which means suddenly it starts conducting electricity. And so if you have your live and your neutral and you have the varistor connected, it's not going to do anything normally if the voltage is low. Um, if you're in North America, 120 volts. If you're in most of the rest of the world, 230 volts. Um, when you actually get a surge, which usually is kind of like a very short kind of high voltage spike which can cause very high currents to flow on you know in we're talking time frames of like microseconds here the varistor will actually turn on it will conduct the current and the idea is you have your your say like your live and your neutral you got that varistor across there it's just going to shunt it so it's going to kind of basically dump it back on the network you can think of it that way and so therefore that that high voltage and potentially high current spike doesn't actually go into your device and fry it it's simply it's kind of bypassed right now, of course, you have three of them in this triangle format because, you know, just to be safe, you want to, you know, uh, you know, neutral and ground should be essentially the same thing, but not always because there can be certain fault conditions. So you want to put a varistor across there, too, to protect against surges between neutral and ground uh, and also between um, live and ground. Uh, you know, normally you're going to have whatever your AC voltage is across live and ground, more or less. Uh, but that's just kind of another level of protection. So you have these three varistors, you put them in this little triangle format, and boom, that's your basic surge protector. But to dig a little deeper, let's actually uh, open a few of these up and see what's actually in them, the different types that are available, uh, because more expensive and fancier does not necessarily mean better. The first one we have here is this guy. This is just an APC by Schneider Electric. And you can say, you see it has a little light here that says surge protection, uh, max 30, 36, 50 watts, 230 volts. I'm in France, so the voltage here is 230 volts, and it's got a European plug. Um, now, the interesting thing about these is some people think that, like, if you plug this in, when you want to protect whatever gizmo against surges, you actually have to, like, plug this in the outlet and plug your stuff in here. That's not actually true, because what's inside this thing... Uh, basically, it will protect everything that is plugged into that circuit. So if you have a room that has like 10 outlets, all you really have to do to protect everything in that room is plug one of these guys in to any of the 10 outlets, and every single gizmo that is plugged in in that room will be protected. So that's kind of handy to know. Uh, obviously, the more of these you have, the merrier, uh, as you'll see in a minute. But um, right, so if we take this guy apart, I've kind of uh, disassembled these. Quick note um, these are the screws for these guys, and you'll notice that uh, if it would actually 
focus, you notice the head on that screw? Yeah, that's like kind of like a one-way screw. It's not like a Phillips head, it's not a flat head. It's designed so that you can screw it in, but you can't unscrew it. So I'm not sure why, but all these surge protectors I'm going to show you, they're like Fort Knox. It's like you'd think that they're using like secret alien technology in them or something. They're like, they really, really don't want you to open these up. And I'm not sure why, because like it's not like a very big deal. But anyway, um, right, so you have this little guy. Let me grab my, my screws and my driver here. I didn't take this little screw out. Come on now. So we take this guy out. He's kind of a pain to get out of there. And then this nice little circuit board will come out. Actually, the whole thing should come out. And it's kind of a disastrous mess. There we go. Well, we're not going to sort of... Oh la la. Okay, so um, you got this thing right here. What what on earth is that? That's a 471 X3 blah blah blah. So basically you have your... This is your neutral input, this is your ground input, and your live is over here. Um, so this guy is connected to here, it's con connected to there, it's connected to... Where is our neutral? Right there. So this is this is kind of like a basic one. It looks like your your basic triangle thing. Th this thing is sort of sometimes they put the varistors inside of like a housing, the little the tr the varistor triangle. And then of course you have a little you have a little resistor here and an LED and this is basically just like usually what they do is they connect this guy to um, uh, to basically across live and neutral and they hook it up in such a way so that if the live neutral varistor happens to get toasted uh, this guy this LED will go out and then you'll go ah oh, okay my my surge surge protector has failed so I need to replace it the problem with that is that this is not actually detecting everything. Uh, it's not detecting a failure of any one varistor, or rather, it's not detecting a failure of all of them, it's detecting a failure of only one. So components in this thing can actually die, and some of your protection will be gone, and you won't even know it. Um, now there's this guy, which is a GDT, a gas discharge tube. Um, I'll talk about that when I get to the next one. And it's, yeah, this, this is kind of like basic. There's not really any super duper protection in it, but it gets the job done. And usually APC is pretty good stuff. So this is the cheapest one. Uh, I'll put links to all this stuff down in the description, but like one of these is like, you know, 15, 20 bucks and boom, it's, you know, same level of protection as any of the others. So if all you need is basic protection, get one of these, plug it in, you're done. Now, next up we have this guy, right? So this is, this is a little more expensive. This is like an Eaton. And it's like, you know, you can see it says like three line protection and it's got a, it's got like a, a little power switch there. And it, you know, they, they write all this stuff on here like, oh, class one, the, the total energy dissipation, 525 joules. Ooh, you know, and they make it all sound all super awesome and stuff. So here's this guy and you know, he's just a normal power strip with an on off. It doesn't have any kind of circuit break or anything. So, you know, we take it, take it apart which I have, I have pre-disassembled it. And um, this one is actually very difficult to get apart because you actually have to like, it appears you have to actually desolder this switch um, because he's kind of clipped in th like this way through the housing. So I'd have to like desolder the whole thing. And yeah, I'm not really gonna do that. Um, again, you have, your little, you have your little light that is not going to, you know, display uh, all failures that happen in the surge protector. Uh, that's kind of uh, not very good. And let's see, so we have this guy I traced out before and you can see in there, you've got your, you've got your two little blue varistors and there's another one. And if you actually kind of trace it out like where the, the, the live, the neutral and the ground are going in, you can kind of like trace the circuits and um, yeah, it's basically the same kind of triangular thing. 
Notice we have another little gas discharge tube down in there. Um, that's actually what it sounds like. It's a tube that has like kind of two electrodes and it's filled with a gas and kind of like if you remember high school physics class, uh, when you apply a voltage across uh, like a gas, it'll become ionized at some point and then it'll start conducting electricity. So the idea with, with most gas discharge tubes is that um, at some voltage, they're kind of going to be exactly like a, a varistor, like there'll be like a turn on voltage and it will start conducting electricity. Now the problem with them is that once they start conducting electricity, even if the voltage drops back down, uh, unlike a varistor, the GDTs will continue to conduct current. So um, I, some GDTs are designed to be kind of like thermal overloads, like if the thing gets really hot, it just starts conducting and dumping current, but um, not this one. Uh, this one... Ah, yes. This one actually has, you can... Ooh, I'm way off camera. You can see in there, there's this, this thing between the blue thingies. That's actually a thermal fuse. So um, the way they usually wire these things is you have like your incoming line and then you have these thermal fuses in line with the live and the neutral. So the idea is that you've got your two varistors and there's a thermal fuse, two or three. The thermal fuse in between, one for live, one for neutral, if either of those varistors overheats, uh, because if it starts conducting a surge and the surge is too big, varistors are limited to only a certain amount of power, right? You can't dump like, you know, 20,000 amps for five minutes through the thing at, at you know, 400 volts or something. Um, so the idea is you have your, your varistors with a thermal fuse in between them, and if, if any, of the ver I, any of the varistors starts to heat up, that thermal fuse will blow and basically cut power to... The, the, the varistors. The thing to note though is that the way this is actually wired, um, it kind of cuts power to the varistors so they don't explode and catch on fire, but what it does not do is actually cut power to the outlets on the front. So the protection that exists in these things, including this, this GDT in here, uh, which may be to, to help prevent leakage current, like I'm not really sure actually, it's kind of, a, it's kind of an odd design, but I'm not sure why there would be leakage current if, you know, passing from from say live to ground and from neutral to ground through a varistor, like yeah, there shouldn't shouldn't really be any leakage unless there's a surge condition. So, and then you would want your safety breaker to trip. So, yeah, I'm not sure why they put the little that that weird GDT thing in there, but um, anyway, the uh, yeah the, the 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 key point with these things is yes, it is doing surge protection of everything plugged in, and again, everything else plugged into that room. But what it's not doing is, if your surge protection gets toasted, um, yeah, it just removes the varistors from the circuit, and that means you have no more protection. And of course, hopefully this little protection OK light will go out, but like I said before, that's only if one of the three varistors fails, not if any of them fail. So, right, uh, you can't even rely on this protection OK light, and yeah. So that's our, our slightly fancier one. And now we move up to this guy, which is the Brennstuhl Super Solid. You see it says Super Solid. And like, you know, down here it says like 13,500 amps total surge current, blah, blah, blah. And of course they have like, you know, the picture with the lightning. And you look at this and you go like, ooh, it's got the protection light and it's got a really nice looking power switch and it's got a circuit breaker. This one must be worth the like 80 euros or whatever I paid for it. Well, uh, kind of, um, yeah. So this one was a real pain in the arse to open. As you can see, these, these sort of one-way screws, I couldn't get them out like I could in the other one, so I had to actually demolish it. And in the process, I managed to slice through some of the wires, so yeah, I'll have to fix it, but, um, right. So this little guy, um, our, our power switch is here, so this is our power switch. And this is the circuit breaker. So as you can see, you've got your, your live and neutral coming in here. And they're basically both going over to this guy. And then this guy is going to switch neutral, which goes back to our protection board. And the, uh, the live, actually the live coming from the plug is first going through the circuit breaker, then going to the power switch. So um, this guy, this circuit breaker, has absolutely nothing to do with the surge protection. It's just a 16 amp 
250 volt circuit breaker. If it pops out, you can reset it. But this is kind of a common misconception with these super fancy ones is people think that like this circuit breaker is triggered by the surge protection. In other words, if there's a power surge, this breaker is going to trip and it's going to protect all my stuff. No, that's not at all how it works. This is simply just a 16 amp circuit breaker that they threw in so they could charge you more money. Um, and, and a circuit breaker this size is probably kind of crappy. It's not really going to do you much good. Um, otherwise, this super fancy thing is just the same as all the other models that I've just showed you. So, uh, in this one, how did I get this? Oh, right, because there's two screws on here that I have not removed. I didn't want to remove everything and kind of leave you uh, unable to see how it looked when I first opened them. Right, so here's this guy. You can take these off and this will kind of show you kind of like the standard design. Um, now, interestingly enough, this one is a little bit like super crazy. Uh, you have your neutral coming in, your live coming in, and there's your ground. Notice that uh, your your live wire here first goes through a normal fuse, and then after this fuse, it goes through this thermal fuse. And the same thing with neutral. You have a normal fuse, which will blow if there's too much current, and if it doesn't, it passes through this thermal fuse. So if either of these resistors or this resistor uh, is overloaded and, and basically explodes or heats up, the thermal fuse will trip, and that's going to, again, cut power to... Uh, the whole the whole shebang. Now when I say the whole shebang, I mean it's going to cut power to the actual surge suppression board right here, and of course the same old thing, the LED, if one of the varistors blows, the LED goes out, if one of the other two are weakened or blows, you're kind of screwed. But again, note that basically this little, this is your input wire from the power switch, right? So, you know, that kind of feeds your surge suppression, but right next to it is another brown wire, and those are just soldered together, so that's just going here. So again, even in this super fancy model, yes, it is suppressing surges, yes, that's a good thing, uh, but y yeah, there's no circuit breaker protection, um, there's an, even in this super fancy, super expensive one, it's suppressing surges, it's not going to actually turn anything off and really, really protect it in the event of uh, a super high surge voltage condition. Right, so there you have it. Surge protectors are worth it. They do protect against small surges. But when we're talking about a surge, as I mentioned earlier, we're talking about like a, a surge of voltage which causes a surge of current on the order of like microseconds. So we're talking like if there's a nearby lightning strike, like, you know, down the block or um, small surges. If you have like a direct lightning strike on your house, your surge suppressors and all your stuff are probably going to explode. Um, also, many people have asked me about EMPs. Um, you can watch my video on EMPs. That's like a really sticky wicket and nobody really knows. Probably in kind of like a lightning strike if it's sort of uh, a nearby EMP that causes surges in the power lines of short duration, yes, surge protectors will protect you. What they will not protect you against, even the fanciest ones, is if, uh, if you have, say, your electrical hookup and say you lose the neutral. There's some failure with your electrical installation somehow and you have consistent high voltages. Uh, you know, at 230 volts AC, if you lose the neutral and say you have a three-phase system, you might see, uh, you know, 460, 480, over 500 volts on a 230 volt circuit. And it's not going to last for microseconds. It's going to be for on the order of seconds or even minutes. Um, in that case, every single one of these surge suppressors, they blow up. Uh, the varistors can literally explode, even if there are thermal fuses. And once that happens, there's no more protection against surges, because as I just showed, th that overvoltage condition, which is a sustained overvoltage, is going right into all your gizmos, and they're all fried. So, yes, they're good, but, um, right, they're not like, they're not magic. They're not like miracle workers. So, in short, uh, it's worth having surge protectors, as many as you want. They have a tiny, tiny capacitance value on the order of, like, picofarads, so they're not like dirty electricity filters. You can plug in a whole bunch of them. Um, it will help. It will prevent, you know, small surges. It will help prevent damage to your equipment, but it's not going to perform miracles in the event of a direct lightning strike, a massive EMP, uh, a, a super duper fault condition in your electrical wiring. Everything is still toast. Um, also, as I noted with the whole, the little protection on light, 
whether it's got that or not, it's worth replacing these surge protectors like every couple years because uh, as surges come through, each of those varistors gets weaker and weaker and eventually they just kind of die. And they're not necessarily going to, you're not necessarily going to know by that protection light that yes, your protection has failed. So use them, uh, replace them every couple years, uh, but don't rely on them to protect against absolutely everything. That's it. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.